Good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Ruminations with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topic of matter. Thank you so much for joining, and we hope that we will be able to learn something from this brief video. But, you know, I have been reflecting, and I did say on a previous video, is Vibes Cartel uh, preparing himself to run for a member of parliament and possibly to become a future prime minister of Jamaica. I have already advanced that sort of proposition, assertion uh, in previous videos. And I think that that is so, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, I think that Vibes Carter is on his way uh, to becoming a future member of parliament of Jamaicans, uh, of Jamaica's politics or in Jamaican politics and also to become a future prime minister of that island. This is where we are on our sojourn from independence, from having gained independence in 1962 to now where we find ourselves right now. We are in the midst of a society that is unfolding, that is unraveling. And I don't think that it is impressive our achievements. You know, we have had modest achievements, but for the most part, I think that we are regressing. And for a long time, we have been regressing. People have been sounding the alarm, but people have not listened to those alarms. They have not listened to the trumpet. Blow the trumpet, trusty watchman. Blow it loud or land and see. God's commission sound the message. Every captain may be free. We ought not to forget what happened, you know, during the Port Royal disaster that in which was it uh, three quarters of the, 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 the Port Royal, the city went under sea because of the wickedness that took place in Port Royal at that time during the days of the Buccaneers. I think that we are reliving those days. Jamaican politics and our leaders are so corrupt and even our economic elites are so corrupt that I don't know how lower they can get. And we must be very, very watchful and cautious and mindful of God's judgment, that the same thing that happened to Port Royal, because God is not a partial God, right? And if that could have happened to Port Royal because of their wickedness, it can also happen to us. And can you imagine the entire Jamaica going under sea, going under the water? I do not wish for that to happen, but we have to pray that God intervene at this moment, because what we're seeing in Jamaica right now is not ordinary. And some of you have taken it for granted. You still think you live in a democracy. You still think you live in a free country and you are not free. And that is why we're seeing people being killed, being slaughtered on a daily basis. But let's get into the weeds of the discussion. Right now, let's go back to 2014. I think I did read this once on here on this program. Um, but let's get back to, we're going to go to the RGR website. And this is... Uh, police commissioner or, or doctor, well, I think, is he doctor? Commissioner Elling, uh, Commissioner Ellington, right? That was the commissioner of police during, I think he, in 2014. But this is on the RGR website, right? And they have not taken this down. And lots of people have it up on their, on their TikTok pages and YouTube pages, you know, because this is was a part of history, recent history. Also, 2014 seems like a long time, yeah, because it's almost 10 years or a decade ago, right? Time is going by. And I think this is the time that Carter was about to be imprisoned, incarcerated, or he might have already been incarcerated. But this is what Dr. or Commissioner Ellington had to say. Carter's gang responsible for more than 100 murders, Commissioner Ellington says. You now, this is coming from the RGR's website. Commissioner of Police Owen Ellington has labeled convicted entertainer Vibes Cartel as a gang leader whose gang was responsible for more than a hundred murders. This is what the former commissioner, commissioner is saying. He made that assertion in an interview with Dion Jackson Miller, which was aired on RGRs Beyond the Headlines and TVJ's All Angles on Wednesday evening. 
The commissioner's statement came a week after the entertainer and three others were sentenced, so he was already sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Clive Lizard Williams. He said the police had been tracking Carter's activities for some, for some time, but he claimed the entertainer was protected because of his popularity. So even before he was sentenced, the commissioner had been making the request that something drastic be taken, some drastic action be taken against Cartel because of his links, his connection with or to so many gangs, right? We have to be mindful of these assertions. And this was the commissioner of police. So he was no ordinary person just walking about, you know, spreading rumors, diffusing misinformation as we like to say in our times. This is or was the commissioner of police speaking. And we should listen. He has access to high intelligence. Investigating the police, so we have the commissioner also revealed that it was his office which started investigations into allegations of extrajudicial killings by some members of the police force in Clarendon. Right? Now, elaborating, he explained that his office initiated the probe after its um, own information revealed that there were activities by some members of the force that needed further investigation. But we don't have to get into this. What we want to say is that the man is saying that here is an entertainer. Here is an entertainer that has uh, connections with gangs. Right? That is what the commissioner is saying. He's a commissioner of police. Owen Ellington has labeled convicted entertainer Vibes Cartel as a gang leader whose gang was responsible for more than a hundred murders. Well, he's suggesting not necessarily that he's connected to gangs, but a gang. But that particular gang was responsible for the murder of over 100 people. That's a lot of people to have been killed. And I have read in other sources that the gang, the gang to which the Vibes Carter was affiliated, they would meet and sometimes they would laugh in terms of devise strategies and plan. And they would say, where do we go next? Do we go to a church or do we go to a school or do we go to wherever to commit these heinous crimes? They had no respect even for God's sanctuary. And this is the person that we see on the platform, you know, at PNP at the recently held PNP conference, Max Cartel with his bandana over his face and the people were excited to have his companionship. Right. This is what I saw. And I was there flabbergasted. Now, you know, I just want to say here, and let me say this very, very, very poignantly and clearly. Many people will say, oh, yes, particularly the members of the PNP, nothing is wrong because Van Scott is a free citizen and he's free to vote for and to be anywhere he wants to be. And that is true. What we are suggesting here is the level of, what should I say now, image, the level of, uh, um, not image, I wanted to say, my phone is ringing and I'm being distracted, right? It's the level of uh, attention that is being given to him, the public attention, the emphasis that is on the Vibe Scarter name. Now, we need to be able to come to grips with whatever we are about. We are not going to be a society in which we are going to be giving this inordinate lending this inordinate amount of public attention to Vibes Cartel. We can't do that because Vibes Cartel should not be as important in our society. But we, the citizens, have made him important because we love criminality and we love this sort of gangsterism. And look at how he was dressed. What sort of example is he setting for our young people? particularly our young males, who we know a lot of them are lost. What sort of, you know, Vibes Scott is 40, 40, I think he's 48. 
Vibes Carter is a big man. He's not a teenage boy. He's not in his 20s. He's a big man. He's a big, mature man. 48. I think he's 48. Yeah. Right? He should not be behaving like that, dressing like that, looking like an idiot. And, the, and people are asking if he's on his way to becoming an MP and prime minister. But, you know, in Jamaica, anything goes. Anything goes and anything can happen, right? Because these people are not serious. They're not serious about, you know, developing our economy. They're not serious about having a culture that is sane, that is conscious, that is civil that is respected on the global stage. What we are concerned about is how much we can become, you know, a much more established ghetto culture. Because we love the ghetto, you know, we love this ghetto culture. Masmana Sofara, and we love to, you know, be as coarse and crude and crass, boorish. We just love doing that because that is how our society has been for a long time. And we have embraced these sort of cultural norms, these cultural mores, these cultural attitudes. And then we lament the whole, when, you know, the whole matter of crime and violence and people die there. And, you know, we, we, we begin to cry and we're wondering why are these things happening? When it's as a result of a wickedness, because it's a wicked society. And it's not only the government. The people are also wicked. The citizens of Jamaica are wicked people. So you can't blame the politicians alone because they might have brought him there at the conference, but look at the excitement of the people when they saw Vibes Carter, right? It's almost like Christ had arrived at the conference, right? This is the sort of Jamaica that we have been nurturing for a very long time. Right for a very long time. And when are we going to wake up to understand that this Jamaica is not going to be a successful one? We'll never reach at the stage of a first world nation if we continue on this trajectory. In fact, I think we are regressing, as I've just said, I stated before. I think we are now a fourth world country. We, I don't think, I can't see any, and I think we're going to get lower, but I can't even envision us getting lower, any lower. I, I, I don't, I can't envision it. It's very impossible. It's impossible for me to see us getting lower because we have stained the Caribbean region with our incivility. We have stained the region. We are an embarrassment to the region. And it's time for us to come to grips with that. It's time for us to come to face the reality. But instead, we make all sorts of excuses that Scott is a free man and he should be anywhere he wants to be and he should vote for any politicians he wants to vote for. So what about if, you know, a criminal who is voting for, well, they're going to tell me that he's an ex, you know, he has been exonerated from his charges, but we don't know if Vibes Carter has been really exonerated. The fact of the matter is that he just didn't, because of the tampering with information, what we're told and other nonsensical response that they gave us for his having been released, he got away, I would say. But he was not, in my opinion, exonerated. We still don't know if Vibes Carter is free, um, not free, is, is guilty or not guilty. We don't know. And most people in their hearts of hearts, based on the information even given by Commissioner Ellington, former commissioner of police, I think that Vibes Carter is guilty. Right? Because the commissioner of police would not have made that statement from 2014. But listen to what also, what's his name? Um, Peter Bonting, right? A, he's also an affiliate of the a member of parliament for the People's National Party. But let's listen keenly to what he is saying on Nationwide. I do I think this on Nationwide might this 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 little you know clip might have been before. I don't think it was in recent times. It could have been in 2014 too, in which he made the statement. 
Um, I think he made the statement at, yeah, let me, at, um, at a, you know, at the theological seminar in Jamaica. But let's just listen to what he has to say. But I thought this was done on, was an interview done on Nationwide. I'm not sure. I don't think this is a recent interview. It might have been done also in 2014 when he was sentenced officially. National Security Minister Peter Bunting says convicted dancehall entertainer Mike's cartel has dedicated his skills to advancing an evil agenda. Minister Bunting says the entertainer has had a reprehensible impact on popular Jamaican culture. The security minister tapped cartel yesterday while giving a lecture at the Jamaican Theological Seminary in St. Andrew. I can extend the reports. Bunting says the boss of the Porto-based Gaza Empire is the poster child of what's bad about Jamaican popular culture. But he says he's not blaming cartel for crime in Jamaica. I don't want to make it all about cartel, because cartel, in my mind, is just the, uh, the principal exponent of the negative aspect of or of the popular culture, or the negative elements. He is the poster child of what I consider to be the negative elements in our popular culture. The National Security Minister says Cartel, also known as the World Boss, has dedicated his talents to keep his songs and his music advocate violence, uh, advocates disrespect for women, it advocates uh, uh, skin bleaching, so it it, um, it essentially devalues our whole identity as a people. I mean, there's hardly anything positive that I can find, um, except that he's very clever. You know? So we, we have to acknowledge that he's, he's very clever, very talented, but he's put that talent entirely in the service of people, in my opinion. Minister Bunting took a job at Cartel and his attorney's recent protestation that he's prejudicing the entertainer's court case as it relates to his appeal. He again blasted back Cartel for describing the dangerous lottery scam as reparations. Now, as you can see, that is a very powerful piece of anti-social propaganda. And I stopped using it because I didn't want to be in the further accused of trying to prejudice the cartel trial, but since the trial is over, um, I suppose I know the accused of trying to prejudice the appeal. Right, so he's alleging, he's asserting um, that Vibes Cartel is actually someone who is an anti social citizen, right? He's clever, right? He gives him his props that he's a clever entertainer, he's smart, he has intellect which is true. When you listen to him, you know that Vibes Carter is no fool, right? He went to Calabar High School, and I understand that even though he was expelled, but he went back and he pursued his 60 subjects and got about, I think, six or seven subjects uh, of which he had math and English. So he's no fool, right? He's someone who also reads. So he keeps himself informed, and but he uses his bright mind, right, in committing and um, enacting evil deeds, right? That is what he does. Remember now that being bright doesn't mean, therefore, that you're a good person, you're a good moral upstanding citizen of any country. And that is what we often sometimes think, oh, I'm brighty. And we think because he's bright, he's excused from, you know, committing evil deeds. But remember now that the most brilliant being that we have in the universe is called Lucifer, the devil that we know he's now is. But, you know, God made him as Lucifer and he was above all created beings and still remains above all created beings in the universe. An exceptionally brilliant mind. But look at what he has done and the evils that he has enacted and devised and committed in the, our world, right? He started in heaven and he won one third of the angelic hosts there. And as a result of that, just a piece of information for you, Lucifer was also 
Minister of Music. There is no musical genius in the universe like the devil, who was former Lucifer. None. The very pipes, as the Bible says, work in him. So he can sing and all of the musical instruments, the pipes that we hear and we listen to are recorded, are there in his voice. So when you see all these entertainers throughout the world, whether in Jamaica or in the United States, the secular entertainers, they're getting their inspiration from him. So when we sing the lyrics of Bob Scottle and his lyrics are great and they're in fact smart and they're clever and they're brilliant. Yes, they might be, but remember now where he's getting his inspiration from. Right? And when you look at Vibes Cartel and look at the sort of signs and symbols that he is actually showcasing and wearing, you really wonder, where are we going as a society? Now, this was a piece of information coming from the Observer. And uh, let me just see if I can pull this up and show you a picture of Vibes Cartel here with his lawyer, his lawyer, um, Buchanan. You know, I forgot his first name. I sat. I sat Buchanan. That, that's the name of his lawyer. And so this, these guys are making a lot of money. And that's all the thing to, you know, it pays to be a criminal, right? If you want to make money in Jamaica, be a criminal. And I'm not suggesting that you should. <laughs> right? But that is the message that is being sent to all Jamaicans, that if you really want to have loads of money, because this guy, no, I said Buchanan is going to be a rich person just by his affiliation with Vibes Cartel. So here's Isaac McCallan at the meeting, and he has not gotten any rest. That's Isaac McCallan after, you know, after the case, he's been all around, he's been doing multiple interviews, he's gone to St. Vincent and the Grenadines to be with Gonzales, and this guy is just living the best days of his life, right? So look at Vibes Cartel here and his bandana. Is this the way we want our students to dress? And he's among people like Dr. Peter Phillips, um, Dr. Dayton Campbell, and all of these so-called upstanding men of politics. This is the way how he was dressed to be on a platform with so-called important people in Jamaica. Right? I don't know. So it says that Dance Hall Superstar Vibes Carter made a surprise appearance at the 86th annual conference of the People's National Party, PNP, at the National Arena in Kingston on Sunday. Carter, who was freed from prison on July 31st after 13 years behind bars, appeared at the podium alongside his attorney, Isaac Buchanan, who is the former chairman of the PNP's Human Rights Commission. The entertainer did not speak but made the PNP's clenched fist symbol as the canon expressed that the party was fighting for the future, the freedom, justice, and the constitution of Jamaica. <laughs> They're fighting for freedom. All of a sudden it's freedom, freedom. The same thing that Kamala is saying, it's freedom. Everybody wants freedom. Freedom under whom? And what type of freedom are we suggesting? Kamala suggests that we are not going back. That's her slogan, that we're not, we're not going back. Going back to what? And you, the citizens, the citizens have to be alert to what the politicians are saying and the use of double language, right? The double speak, right? The way of, ways of talking that you have to look beyond, beneath what they're saying, because <laughs> their speeches are often loaded with pronouncements that you and I might not necessarily think is going to be best for our society. The message that I want to say is that we are fighting for the youths of this country, for the future, for freedom, for justice, and the Constitution. So just know that we are supporting PNP President Mark Golding 150%. Not only 100%, but 150%. We are supporting Mark Golding, <laughs> because Mark Golding is going to bring Jamaica freedom and prosperity, and he's going to elevate the living conditions of 
Jamaica's or Jamaica, yeah, Jamaica's youths, right? He's going to he's going to liberate them and he's going to elevate their standard by having them wearing bandana and tattooing themselves and being criminals. That is what Mark Holding is going to do, right? Because why would he be having bad Carter? Why would Bad Carter's image be so prominent at the eighty six conference of the PNP? Why would he? Why would he be there? Why would he be such playing such a pivotal role, such a prominent role in that event? Right? Just to be there and on that platform says a lot. Why just why didn't he? Well, people are saying he's he's an ordinary citizen and he should be free to do whatever he wants to do. Yeah, well, show up without going on the platform. Right? Why was he on the platform? Why did he have to be on the platform? Because they are sending a message to you. And you have to read it between the lines. Right? You've got to read between the lines. But this is what I wanted to come to you, to showcase to you, to, you know, enlighten your minds with. I'm wondering, with the level of criminality in Jamaica and the normalization, as it were, of criminal, of, of criminal deeds, of criminals, of criminality, I think that Vibes Cartel has found the right place for him to be, and that is in Jamaica. And he has now found his nest, as it were, in the People's National Party. By the way, do you know that there were rumors, there were allegations during the pandemic that, you know, Mr. Andrew Holness, now Dr. Andrew Holness, wanted to... By the way, I think that they say he's going to get his PhD sometimes or doctorate, whatever it is. We don't know. Um, is it next year? I think it was they said next year, you now. I don't think he has yet received it. So he's not a doctorate, doctor, whatever his name is. But, you know, Mr. Holness, the Prime Minister of Jamaica, let's say that, right? Because he's graduated yet and we haven't seen that certificate. So until we see it and, you know, in, and he's got it in hand and he's graduated fully, then we can say that he has successfully earned his doctorate. But until then, he shall be called by me, Mr. Honest, as he is. So Mr. Honest did propose to have, or it was alleged that he was thinking, I should say, I shouldn't say he proposed, but he was thinking of having a Vibes Cartel, you know, sing a song to have people vaccinated, right? And people got up and wondered what he was doing. Right. And I think that he sort of backed down. He didn't do it. But he did say that he would not put it at the back of his mind, because if it's if it is that entertainers can have some influence and impact on society. In terms of doing what the government tells them to do, then he will do it. Now we're seeing it's almost like we're being sent an indirect message that Jamaicans should vote for PNP because Vibes Cartel it was on a PNP um, platform and he endorses he endorses the leader of the People's National Party, Mark Golding. <laughs> so we should vote for him because he's teacher, right? And I heard somebody, I think a number of people yesterday were talking about Vibes Cartel being teacher and whatever teacher says. I am going to do because this is teacher. And teacher is, once teacher says something, I think it is credible, it's believable, and we should follow what teacher said. Because I saw the system set up. That is how the system is designed. Right? So all of you who are trying to be upstanding citizens of Jamaica, you are going to be in great competition with criminals, with hoodlums with coarse and crass and bullish people. And many of the jobs that you think you would have got because you think you should exhibit some amount of decency and civility, you will not be able to get because these people are going to be in line first. They are going to be considered to be the standard bearers of what the Jamaican identity should be. And Vibes Cartel is now the unsung hero, right? He is now 
a very prominent man in Jamaica. And notice that he's just returned from prison. Now, you tell me, people. You tell me, ladies and gentlemen. Right? Use your mind. Do you think any civil society, any honorable society would have had somebody who, yes, was released and we thank God that he was released from prison based on what we heard he was going through and the mental and the psychological problems that he had to endure? But, <laughs> well, let me not get into down the rabbit hole right now. But shouldn't you think that the fact that we don't know whether he's guilty or is innocent, don't you think they should be, that scholar should be going through months of therapy before he would have been allowed to even be in the public sphere, in the public's eye, in such a prominent position? I mean, he could, of course, be going around and going to buy his patties and do whatever he wants to do. But there's, there's too much media attention that is given to Vibe Scott. And I saw him, you know, he was, he showed up for Rising Star the other day with um, Elaine and, uh, what's that guy's name again? And the guy that's the entertainer, entertainer report. Um, I forgot his name. The, the, the one that does the entertainment report. Anthony Miller, right, Anthony Miller. He showed up and they were, well, I'm not sure if they were acting, but they were happy to see him as one of their, of, of, as one of the court judges. And he was able to judge the people who sang on Rising Star. Very interesting sort of developments that we're seeing. And he's everywhere. He's every where Five Scarter is omnipresent. He's not omnipresent, but you know what I mean, right? That he's everywhere in terms of the show showing up. He can't be at, at that one at the same place, every place. Well, he can't be everywhere at the same time. That's what I want to say. My tongue is tied up. <laughs> he can't be everywhere at the same time as God, as only God can do, but he shows up at every major event. And hence my pronouncements that he's everywhere. Right? Where are we going as a society when we do and when we showcase these people? When we put them up on a pedestal as we are doing to Vibes Carter, where are we heading as a nation? Give us vision lest we perish. Knowledge send us heavily father because we need the knowledge we have lost the knowledge and that is why we think we are a democracy when we are not we're living on a grand plantation and we've got to see how we can get off of the plantation and begin to build a civil democratic society thank you so much for joining i hope that you like and do share and you subscribe remember now to like the videos and to leave a thoughtful and intelligent comment so that the algorithms can know that you are interacting with my videos and also i definitely like to converse with you whether you're sending me negative statements or not right i generally try to respond to as many people as possible see you then all the best to you and have a fantastic day or evening or night, shall you, or will you? <laughs>